in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as the mighty, 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 oh, uh, Angel Snout Number 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. What brings me to this hopefully short conversation, I was listening to a uh, before I before I get into our discussion, I want to make something very clear. Most times, I open my video with "In the name of my ancestors." What must be understood is that I am simply giving respect and honor to those of whom sacrificed those who lived prior to myself because they are the reason of why I exist. They are the reason why I live as comfortable as I am living today. So out of respect for them, regardless to their actions in the past, who they were, what they were, what they built, what they did not build. I am simply giving honor to my parents. For those of us who are Christians, we are taught to honor thy mother and thy father. It did not say worship, did not say praise, sing and dance. It just said simply Honor thy mother and thy father. It did not say that they did not deserve that honor because they were drug addicts or maybe they deserve special honor because they became president of the United States. Regardless to what your parents were, it did not say that you should not give honor and respect to your parents. So, when I open in the name of my ancestors, I am simply giving respect and honor to my parents that came before me. Because I know that they were capable of error. They had faults. They were not perfect. So those of us who are living today, we must learn from our ancestors. We must take advantage of history as much untainted history that we can get our hands on. We must not get caught up in fictional history, fairy tale history, because when we get caught up in, in the belief that our ancestors were ho this holy and righteous people, that never did nothing wrong. That would be a lie. Because if it was true. We would not be sitting in the position. That we are in today. And if all human beings. Came from us. How could such come into existence. If that unrighteous behavior. If that so called immoral behavior. Was not and did not. Was not part of us. But we are. Living. And we have come through a process. A purification process to get all that and make all that manifest in our reality so that once we break this bondage of unrighteous behavior this bondage this slavery of caught up in evil we all know and we have learned never to walk those paths again so that is all that I uh, am doing it is ludicrous it is silly it is ignorant and a whole lot of other things to believe that for some reason 
out of everybody on earth or that we come from this uh, extremely holy and righteous people based on what? Based on what law? What were they doing? There is no proof. All the so-called historical information that we have show a human being, regardless of color, the human family has suffered this immorality, this unrighteous behavior for a very long time. There are no examples of a pure and righteous people. In your mind, just like every day, it's America the beautiful. The citizens of this nation actually believe they are beautiful. And in many ways, this nation is a beautiful place. It is wonderful. It is, and it could be a perfect example of, of the harmony that human beings can show one another. But it is not America the beautiful. It is full of discrimination based on race. It is full of discrimination and wickedness based on gender. And it, we have an extreme class problem where those in high places look down upon those in lower places. Those with more material things look down upon those who have less. So it is ugly. And in that sickness, that lust for, the, for material things, they go out around the earth to bring down others and, and leech and parasite from uh, other lands to gain material wealth. So America is beautiful, but it is also ugly. And humanity has been ugly for a long time, and ugly is all that we know. And ugly is how we express ourselves. So a person cannot come on YouTube and express his opinion. And here come the ugly to their page. Because ugly is all that we know. The ugly is the only thing the human being has been exposed to for thousands of years. And if you don't show ugly, people look at you crazy. What he think he he or she must think they Jesus. You look, you claim you want peace, but when somebody expressed the peace that you claim that you want, there's a problem. Why is that? Because we are ugly. We are ugly regardless to color. The human being has known nothing but ugly for a long, long time. So now we are living in the ultimate the highest levels of ugly. But a process has begun for the human family, regardless of color. Some people express ugly worse than others. But when it's all said and done, murder is murder. Whether the person was murdered with two bullets or 200 bullets, the murder was still committed. And it's still the person still lies dead. So you have a human being that is operating on a dead level. That's why in religion it talks about how one must be raised from death to life. This is why in religion it talks about how being from being coming from being raised from the dead you rise to the heights of a heaven because rising to heaven shows or it symbolizes our ability to break out of this materialism that we are so loyal to today we are all about money we are all about gold we are all about silver and diamonds and and pleasure of the flesh. We need a penis. We need a vagina. We need to feel as though we are more powerful and greater than others. So we enslave animals and put them in zoos. And we put leashes and nooses around their neck. And if that's not good enough, then we'll do it to another human being we enslave so that we can feel better and greater based on not spirituality, not on the heights of a heaven, but on, on uh, 
materialism and that which is connected to the earth and that which is earthbound is dead anything connected to this planet is dead that's why you must rise out of the grave and rising out of the grave symbolizes we are coming up out of the dirt corpse dead bodies belong to the ground but that which is living goes on top of the ground and that which is living is capable to develop like the bird and fly above the clouds and in and in and in former christian religions heaven used to be above the cloud or on top of the cloud now we must strive to seek that which is in the universe as it is limitless becoming just laying on a cloud still limits us to the gravitational pull of the earth. Now we strive to break the bondage of materialism, gender bias, racism, and all these isms that have made us slaves. Now we strive to break the gravitational pull or the boundaries of this planet to go out into heaven, to be with our Father, that the art. Thou art in heaven. <laughs> I hope you understand where I'm coming from. If you don't, you will or we will die in the process. The human family has come and is entering a point in its existence whether this is a life and death struggle. Either we are going to live or we are going to die. And I have said many times. And it's not up to me, but I have said many times, it is best that the human being dies. It is best that we become extinct. We have not earned the right to live. As the human being is a destroyer, the human being is not a benefit to the earth, but a leech, a parasite to the earth and a, a destroyer of the earth. And have become harassment and a killer of animal life. An enslaver. So it would be better really for the human being having no respect for this planet. Having no respect for animal life. It would be best that we die. And if it was up to me within the next 30 seconds. You and I would be dead. Since you love the earth. Since you love materialism so much. Since you are ugly. And since you are dedicated and loyal to this planet. Then you need to go back into the planet. Up under the ground. Because you know. Surely you are not beneficial on top of the ground. So I give my. Respect and honor. To the ancestors. Because they want us to reach heaven. They want us to go where no man has ever gone before. Where they have never treaded. Where they have never walked. Each generation is supposed to step a little farther. Supposed to evolve a little better. And become a little greater than the generations prior. But we are going backwards. Technologically, the human being seems to advance. But these Technological advances bring us death, poisons our air, poisons our water. We are technologically advanced, but in that advancement, it brings us death because we are connected to this planet. We are connected to the earth. We don't have a connection to the universe because if we had connection to that which brought us into existence, that which brought us into existence gave us life so it would give us knowledge to maintain that life but since we broke that connection we don't have that umbilical cord that attachment no more then those things that we do upon our own brings us death and so in the YouTube universe and all over the only thing we see coming from out of the minds of most people is vulgarity profanity wicked thoughts there is no peace it's something to talk about. The only thing that has been presented to us is death and suffering. And I would hope 
that regardless to your color, you should be sick of murder and rape, incest, pedophilia, and all these evils that plague the human being. It's not about color. It's about right and wrong, justice and injustice, righteous and unrighteous behavior, morality and Im immorality. You must make up your mind because we have devils. Listen to me. We have those with satanic minds that appear as angels. And we get caught up in them because they look like angels. But they are wolves in sheep's clothing. And they know how to smile. And you're caught up in that. That is the reason why, again... America is ugly. That is why the human family has been turned and we are now, we have grown to the ultimate of ugly behavior. We are the most wicked. We are the most evil. We are the most unrighteous, immoral people that have ever existed on this planet because our, our technology has helped us make it even worse. Our love is fake. Our smiles is fake. We are hypocrites. We are in bad shape. But there's a people. But there's a people that have come through a purification process. That is ready to become the catalyst to change this for us. If not, if they don't rise, and I'm talking about the black man and woman of America, if they don't rise, then all of humanity is destined to go extinct. Mark, mark my words, I'm telling you this. And those people who wanted to be them, they are jealous. They, are, they have become jealous. And in their jealousy, they will deny themselves the chance to be reborn. That is the time that we're living in right now. And you can take it or let it alone. If you open up your eyes just a little bit, you can see it. I would prefer that you close your eyes and get in your casket and let the dirt be placed upon you. I'm sick of messing with you. But it's not up to me. I can't make something happen. Before it's time. Or should it happen. I don't think that you deserve a second chance. I don't think that you deserve to be reborn. You are unworthy. It is best. That another life form come behind you. And reap the benefits of what you and I should have been able to get. The great reward. And the reward is available to everybody. But like all things, everybody can't be first in line. And see, that's where our problem is. We want to be rewarded. We want praise. First of all, some of us want praise. And we have not earned praise. We want trust, have not earned trust. But like all things, you have to get in line. And the first one in the line of redemption is the one who is worst off. And that is the black man and woman of America. There are those, and I use this as an example to make this point, then go into my main topic. See, you have those, let's, I'm going to use this as an example. We have rich people. They never want for nothing. Then you have poor people always needing and wanting something. We have a natural, we have a disaster, we have a tornado. Tornadoes are, are in the news, so I'm going to use tornadoes. Okay, so you have a tornado. Now, here comes the food supplies. Here comes the water. Here comes this and that. Now, here are the 
rich people never having to want. They also want to be the first in line. Now here you are, never had to want for nothing, never had to do without. You would think, since I've never wanted anything, I've never suffered, these people who, who are suffering, why not allow them to get the, the first supplies? Oh no, but see, see, they want, always want it all. In the mind, see, that's what, that's what makes rich people and those who are in power, and when you have something, that's what makes you arrogant. Because in their minds, well, these poor, they used to suffer in any, anyway. They was, they was in back of the line, they might as well stay in the back of the line. Don't you see that that is sick? Don't you see that your mind has a disease? But that's the type of world we live in right now. And this must be destroyed. And as it has made the human family sick. Not only black people, not only white folks, the whole human family has become ill because of this behavior. And that behavior must be eliminated. It must be destroyed. Otherwise, it is best that the human being, those we call human beings, as human beings do not exist. Those around you are not human beings. These persons that wear suit and ties and they talk eloquently and they do all these, they do all these amazing things with technology, they are intelligent savages. They look like human beings, walk like human beings, but they have a beast-like mentality. Intelligent savages, I call them. So we, so the human, this intelligent savage, must be destroyed. The human being must be uplifted. But the intelligent savage must be made extinct. And that is who is going to hell, the intelligent savage. They must die for the human being to live. If we were really human beings, I would not be talking to you right now. The human being comes in all kinds of colors. The human being can be Caucasian, the human being can be black, red, yellow, or whatever. But the intelligent savage has taken the colors of humanity and made one superior and one inferior and all this matter. The, the intelligent savage has made materialism a way of life, individualism and all these isms. The intelligent savage is a very sick creature. You do not want to remain an intelligent savage. So it is, not, it is no shock to me. The ill behaviors, the violent sounding, the ugly behaviors of those who comment on YouTube, they can't help it. They are intelligent savages. So those of you and those of us who evolve to become and express our humanity, you're living among savages. And when you look and when you live among savages, you have to take precautions. You have to build a ring of fire around yourself to keep the savages back. And since the intelligent savage is like you, it has the potential to become human. But first, we have to control it. We have to get it off of us. We have to build this ring of fire. Then we must gain its trust. It's savage. You have to learn how to tame them. And see, if you really understood 
your Bible, and if you really understood your Quran, these are books that have been passed down through generations to give you an idea of how to tame the savage beast. Not only with music, but with wisdom. The Bible and the Quran is that ring of fire that you put around yourself when around the savage. <laughs> if you really understood those books, but you don't. So they have become pieces of paper that you worship. Pieces of paper that you glorify when they should be pieces of paper to give you direction and guidance to bring yourself out of a savage condition into a godlike state from savage to human being to what y'all call God. Let us evolve, build a ring of fire around ourselves so that perhaps this intelligent savage may have a chance at life and go on to do the great things that we have the potential to do instead of being caught up in the gravitational pull of the flesh. As, this, as when you get caught up in the flesh, then you get caught up in death. Because as surely as the flesh come into life, it, it is like grass. It come up and it withereth away. But if you understood and could embrace your soul, even though the flesh die, you continue to live as the soul rises from the flesh into the heaven. Oh, man, it's so beautiful when I think about it, but it also, but it, but when I see how y'all act, it, it sort of quashes the happiness that I get, because I know your potential. It's, it's like, uh, it's like you see a, a bad child, an angry child, and you get so frustrated at the child, because the child shows you that it is smart, not it, but he or she is smart. They can learn. They can do great things, but you get frustrated with them because this intelligent child will rather do stupid things. They'll rather do drugs. They will rather go out and party. They'll rather do all these detrimental things when you can see within this child greatness and it's frustrating I am very sure that the human being is very frustrated in the eyes of God or in the eyes of that which brought us into existence it's frustrating to see all of this go to waste it's frustrating that's not what I want to talk about <laughs> But I guess that's, it's good for us to talk. I don't want to convert you to anything. I want us to think. I don't want you to think like the pastor say. I don't want you to think what the imam says or what President Obama is talking about. I want us to think for ourselves. I want you to know for yourself. See, when you know for yourself, you can stand strong. Many of y'all get upset with other people's opinion because you are not strong, like they say in, in Christianity, you're not strong in your faith. You are depending on somebody to bring answers to you instead of seeking those answers for yourself. If you can find somebody that you can trust, if you can find somebody competent, it is all right to a certain point to embrace them. But there is nothing like knowing yourself. 
it is there is nothing like driving a car yourself. You can get you can get where you want to go in the passenger side. But there's nothing more wonderful when you can get behind the wheel and take yourself where you want to go, where you want to go, how you want to go. Because the problem with depending on another driver is that driver might have a heart attack while behind the wheel. That person might get sick. There might be something wrong with that. That driver might be taking you somewhere where you don't want to go. But when you are in the passenger seat and you can't drive yourself, you can't buy your own car, then you become victim to the will or the wiles of those of whom you depend on. And that is not what the creation wants for you because everything in this creation is dependent, independent rather. Everything, every bird is independent, every bee is independent. They may work in a group, but they are all individuals that are dependent upon themselves. But we, as human beings, we have become conditioned to depend on a person or persons or a book. Just dependent upon something instead of in being independent and, on and have faith in ourselves. We've lost the connection to the universe. We've lost the connection to, to the great mother. So now we have adopted and become loyal to foster parents. And some foster parents love their foster children, but some foster parents are in it for the money. <laughs> oh, man, I still have not touched on what I want to talk about, but. When the creation starts talking to you, you just let your mind become a blank canvas and just allow the creation to talk to you. So it's talking to us on this very early Sunday morning where some of us are getting ready to go to church. But are you going to really get fed or are you going to get rewarmed dinners? Or are you going to get something that was cooked in a microwave? See, when you come to the, to the reality's temple, I want to give you a meal that's fresh. I want to give a meal to you that's full of vitamins that will give you nutritional value. Home-cooked meal. Not fast food. Not old food. Because, see, the Bible is old food. 2,000 some years old. The Quran is old food. 15, 1400 years. This is new food for you. Home cooked meal. Who's doing the cooking in your kitchen? Who's the chef in your kitchen? What type of food are they giving you? Are they giving you natural food or are they giving you synthetic? Are they giving you natural food or is it processed? Oh, man. <laughs> Woo. Is the chef giving you meat when you are a vegetarian? I'm here to give us good food coming from a good source and there's no better source than having a direct connection to that which brought you into existence your maker because your maker knows what's good for you the maker of this automobile tells the owner what kind of gas to put in it what kind of oil to put in it when you should change the tires when you should change the oil how to maintain it you're not getting your maintenance directions, your maintenance information from your creator. You're getting it from a second-hand owner that have enslaved you and have made you unnatural. 
you have not been given the right oil. You have not, your tires have not been rotated properly. That's why you're always sick and you end up in the junkyard. And some of y'all call yourself and some of you are known as junkies. <laughs> oh man, I'm, woo, this is, man, I'm, oh wow, I just, mm, mm, mm. This is religion. See, because religion was designed to enslave you. To control us. But this, what you hear from the Realities Temple, is religion without being religion. Because the creation that which brought us into existence or let us say God. God knows how you have been conditioned. All of us. We are, I'm going to make up a new word, religious fine. We have been taught that, we have been taught to believe, believe, believe in a higher being, a supreme being. It is at the root and it is at the base of, of our mind and in our subconscious. Even myself. See, even though I would tell you I don't believe in God. Makes no difference what I say out of my mouth. In my subconscious, because I'm just like you, I have been taught to believe in a supreme being. So, in order to talk to you. And in order for you to get you to try to understand, I have to bring the message to you in a religious sounding, in a religious sounding type of manner. Just like if I was trying to speak to Chinese people, the only language they know is their language, Chinese. Then I have to try to learn some Chinese. I have to try to express myself in a Chinese type of manner so they can get the best understanding. Otherwise, something get lost in translation. See, when you translate a message from one language to another, sometimes there are words that is not available in that language to be expressed in another language. So, sometimes a message can get lost in translation. So when we have Bible and Quran and these books are translated, we must be careful because something within it may be lost because this word, this message was taken from one language and placed in another language and a word in one language might not mean the same in another. So it's all, I mean, there are many facets in this that we must take in consideration. So my suggestion really to us is just not to embrace none of it. And really, we don't need those things no more. We don't need Quran. We don't need Bible. God is talking to you every day and bringing you a message directly. Those was indirect messages to us directed at another people. At another time. If God has not changed. Then God has a message for you. Directed to you. For you at this time. And I'm telling you right now. If you give yourself a chance. And it's not me. Open up your mind to self thought. And you will see. A revelation. And revelations coming to you. See I can only talk for. From what has been given to me. Who knows what God wants to say to you. But you are so caught up in what somebody else is talking about. And won't open yourself up. Oh, oh man. I love y'all. The human being. You are savage as hell right now. You just don't know your potential. And really it is frustrating. I don't want you to die. I don't want us to die. Because I know how marvelous, how wonderful 
we really are. And when I say we, I mean the human family, the human being. And we show it all the time how great we are, how godlike we are. But it just so happened we are corrupt. We use our power in a corrupt manner. We behave in a vicious, arrogant, selfish, greedy, incompetent, and corrupt way. And we need to break ourselves from this type of behavior, this mentality. With that said, allow me to bring this to conclusion with my two cents on a particular subject that I derive from listening to the Conscious Platt radio broadcast and the and I want to say to Conscious Platt, Sister Conscious Platt, I don't know what your new name is. I you have to send it to me by email then I will begin to recognize your new conscious name. But Sister Conscious Platt, you must keep your head up. When you are speaking truth, when you are bringing revelation, when you are trying to sincerely help people, there are those who benefit from evil, there are those who benefit from Wickedness, there are those who are going to be jealous of you because they want to be you. They want to be the one who can raise people from death to life. And they could if they concentrate on themselves, but they'll rather concentrate on your destruction, my destruction, rather than themselves. So, I would not give these devils, and chances are they are black devils. I would not give them the satisfaction of just allowing my YouTube channel to be suspended. You need to rebuild it and make it greater than what it was before they destroyed it. Don't allow these bums to, to be so happy like they've accomplished something. In order to survive on YouTube, I have six, seven, eight many channels and see the set the thing about the whole this whole thing is that when they split me up when they made uh cause me to create more channels it made me become stronger because now when you google or when you search youtube my videos pop come from all kinds of places so really, when they were trying to dig a grave for me, they was digging a grave for themselves. They made it better for me. So you must take a situation that looks bad and make it better. And you can do that because it's your time. We can do that because it's our time. Allow the creation to speak to you and move you in the right direction. And I'm telling you that the creation that which brought us into existence wants you to bring your YouTube channel back and stay wherever you are at. Stay there. Don't give these demons, these faceless cowardly trolls and whoever, don't give them the satisfaction. Show them how strong you are. Show them the power that backs you up. And the power that backs you and me up is time. It's our time. And when it's time for something to be born, you can't stop it. But we, we don't want to be, be we don't want to be born dead. We don't want to be miscarriage. This must go full term. And above all, don't allow somebody to suggest that you abort the life that you was given. Now your sister Conscious Platts, her, uh, excuse me a second. (coughs) 
Sister Cautious Platt's uh, her subject or topic on her radio blog talk show and the link to her show her her uh, blog talk radio page is in the more information box and we really need to support Cautious Platt support Cautious Platt support Cautious Platt <laughs> the link is in the more information box wonderful show now the topic was who is your favorite master teacher I listened to the radio show and many people put out names they they call Malcolm X a master teacher Marcus Garvey John Henry Clark Amos Wilson Ashray Kwesi it's so many so many of our brothers I noticed they didn't really talk about the sisters none of the sisters are master teachers I did not hear them mention any sisters Conscious Platt is a master teacher I think in fact when we look upon master teachers I don't see an individual when I view master teacher I see a people and that people are the descendants of slaves born in America we are the master teacher and we are becoming the master teacher that's for another well actually I talked about it in some in uh, earlier videos and we're gonna I'm gonna keep telling us that but let us say technically I want to talk about technically technically black people especially born in America you have produced no master teacher uh oh I know uh oh brother oh we never know how you're going to go. It's not about me. I'm telling you. If you allow your mind. If you allow your mind to open up. You will see what I see. But technically. Black people born in America. We have no master teacher. Because. Here's the reason. Because those in a slave-like or captive position cannot be master of anything. You are a slave. So how can you be master? If you were the master of anything, you wouldn't be complaining about being not being free. You would not be complaining about, I need my freedom. So technically, a captive people or a people in a slave-like condition or a slave cannot produce a master teacher how many master teachers do y'all talk about during slavery because there was no doubt you was enslaved you was a slave there was no master teachers and if you still are living in a slave-like condition Slaves cannot produce master teachers. You can produce highly evolved rebels. You can produce highly evolved revolutionaries. But they are not master teachers. Because a slave cannot produce a master teacher. A criteria for being a master you must be free that's that's what made the white man the massa he's the master because he's the one that's free but he took somebody else freedom away from them a master must have discipline 
We don't have discipline. We are, we are over there. We're over here. There is no discipline. We live in chaos. Mayhem. We are corrupt individuals. We do this today and do something else tomorrow. We are not disciplined. That's why many of us have problems fasting. Because fasting is a discipline. Fasting means you must deny yourself physical food, physical water. Many of us can't handle that because we are weak in our minds. We have no discipline. And when you are a slave, there is no need for discipline. Your discipline is forced on you by whip, by the master. A, you are selfish. You only think about yourself. You don't care nothing about you doing your own thing and everybody out for themselves. You're not looking out for the benefit of a whole of the of the whole. We as a people. These master teachers, in order to be a master teacher, you must look out for the benefit of all black folks. Eventually, you must look out for all of humanity because all humanity comes from you. You are the parent. You are the master teacher. You have to look beyond color. You have to look beyond race if you are a master. Those things were meant to enslave. And a real master teacher comes and is formed to break slavery, to bring discipline. To destroy selfishness and greed and arrogancy. A master teacher wishes his students, a master teacher wishes her students to evolve and surpass themselves. I'm going to use Bruce Lee as an example. Bruce Lee had 10, Bruce Lee had 10 master teachers. Bruce Lee surpassed, evolved beyond all of them. And you never heard none of them complain, jealous of Bruce Lee. They was happy to see that Bruce evolved beyond them. Bruce became a master teacher. Master teachers don't view themselves as supreme, as being better than anybody. You never hear them brag. There's a discipline. They are humble. We have lost our humility. We have lost our meekness. Because we're trying to be big and bad towards a, a vicious enemy. You don't have to be big and bad. A snake don't have to run around and try to prove anything. But if you mess with that snake, a poisonous snake, he will show you what he's about. And a, and a snake will give you warning, telling you. If I was you, I wouldn't mess with me. But if, but if you notice, Bruce Lee and the master teachers, they come from a people that was considered free. That's why you see these disciplines. That's why you see this humility. A master teacher must have honor. He must have integrity, character. And these are things that some of those of whom we call master teachers, many of them lack those things. Thus, they failed. Thus, when they died, or let us say, I'm going to use this for an example. I'm going to bring this to conclusion. 
And I'm going to say, being a revolutionary, being one who are who is it, who is or are in rebellion against their slave master, doesn't necessarily make you a master teacher. Just because we have people among us that have gained certain wisdom and knowledge, so that we are better able to confront a master. A slave owner doesn't necessarily mean they are master teachers. They've come up with a strategy, strategy, and have gained some knowledge in order to, in order for us to be placed in a position to become a master teacher. I want to say this and give us an example. Marcus Garvey, for example, some of us view him as a master teacher but there was flaw in the master teacher he wanted us to go back to Africa number one problem brother Marcus you have a wonderful idea because you are a revolutionary you are a highly evolved rebel but you have not really thought your idea out because you want a people to go back to Africa but the people that you suggest this to are generations removed from Africa generations they have no idea of what Africa is don't know nothing about it number one problem Marcus Garvey had no relationship with Africa. So you're going to get on a boat or whatever and you want to go back to Africa. Go where? Who is accepting you? There are already black people, Africans, on the African continent. Where are you going to go? You leave out, a, you leave out many questions. You, know, you, you, you raise many questions that there are no answers. You're acting on emotion because you know damn well you don't want to be here under this oppression but you want to go somewhere else where you was not invited you have no plan of action you're acting in emotion and a master teacher does not act on emotion a master teacher acts because of his discipline and his foresight Ability to look into the future. So there was flaw. And thus there was failure. In Marcus Garvey. Elijah Muhammad is called a master teacher. If it was not for Elijah Muhammad. I would not be talking to you right now. But Elijah Muhammad. At the root and the base of his teaching. Is religion. And all religions was designed to enslave, to control. And a master teacher, the role of the master teacher is to free the mind. You can't be a master teacher being loyal to that which was designed to enslave the mind. And Islam supports slavery and it Islam was used to justify and the religion was used to and, and it did and it was involved in black commercial slavery so there's flaw here in this person that we call a master teacher but a master teacher again is to cause the, the mind of the student to become free, not to help them become a slave. John Henry Clark is called a master teacher. The problem with John Henry Clark in being called a master teacher, and all these people come from a people who are in a slave-like condition or held captive. So just based on that, they cannot be 
master teachers. They come from a slave people. John Henry Clark and some of these others are historians. And a historian can be a highly evolved rebel. But historical information can be tainted. It can be impure to be made into something to support that rebellion. Just like Adolf Hitler took what is called historical information so it would reflect his idea. So if you want your people to believe they are, they come from these great Egyptian people or whatever, then you take this knowledge and you flip it and paint it so that it so that history can now embrace your philosophy. The problem in a historian is an historian his knowledge can be tainted. Also, when we get caught up in trying to go back to Africa, trying to go back to Egypt and be Egyptians or be Muslims, then you deny these black people their rightful heritage and their rightful heritage is the earth. Your rightful heritage is, is Africa. Your rightful heritage is Europe. Your rightful heritage is Asia. Your rightful heritage is the universe itself. So you are enslaving the mind to one specific place when the master teacher reaches out to free the mind of the student. So, since these are not, they look like master teachers and it is the illusion and as far as we're concerned they are master teachers, but really they are highly evolved rebels, not actually teachers because they come from a from an enslaved people when they die that is the end that is the end it was the when Marcus Garvey the master teacher when he died everything that was him died with him his people his people under him Regardless if he was deported or not, they should have been able to maintain what they built in America, but they could not. Because they were, because they were not, they were not like Bruce Lee. They, they, they depended upon the master teacher. They depended upon this highly evolved rebel, but they didn't know how to rebel themselves. They were in the passenger seat of the car and depended upon another driver. And when that other driver was put in jail for DWI or whatever, then they didn't know how to continue. So when Elijah Muhammad died, you say, well, the nation of Islam is still here. No, the nation of Islam died with Elijah Muhammad. There are a lot, there are many people who claim Elijah Muhammad. Many, many, all over the place. But see, if you were taught by a master teacher, there is no questions. You cannot dilute his teaching. You cannot do, you cannot, you can evolve, but you cannot dilute. You can go backwards. You lose the essence of that person because these people were in the driver's seat. The people's mind was not free. They were enslaved. So since they were enslaved, when the master died, they died with him. It's just like in some parts of Africa or in African history, when the king and the queen died, many of their servants would be buried alive with them. And that's what happened. And that's what happens to us in our struggle in black liberation and revolution. 
when our master teachers, if you want to call them that, or our highly evolved rebels, when they die, we die with them. We become buried with them instead of staying alive and continuing on on top of the earth. We go down into the earth with them. And above all, we embrace these master teachers. We embrace these political systems that we've created in the past. We embrace our great civilizations of the past and we want to know. But the bottom line is, they no longer exist. The bottom line is, they failed us. You have gone no further than the master teacher. In fact, you've gone backwards. Because you should be operating on the level of your teachers, but you are not. You've gone backwards. And you turn your master teacher into a symbol of hero worship. You worship them. Oh, I just love me some Marcus Garvey. Oh, I just love Elijah Muhammad. Oh, Malcolm. They become celebrities. You become a f fanatic. You, you are, you are, you have become a Malcolm X fan, an Elijah Muhammad fan, a John Henry Clark fan, an Ashrick Crazy fan, but you have, you don't, you have not learned nothing. So when they die, that which they brought into that idea that they brought into existence, it, it died, it dies with them. And you're still mentally dead. You were once mentally dead due to the activity of being a slave in America. Now you die on your own accord. Because you're not really listening and open up your mind to to. You have not learned and understood what your teachers have told you and you refuse to think for yourself. You have no discipline. You still are slave in the mind. But instead of the white man being a slave, now you become a slave to your own arrogancy. I'm a black supremacist. Black power, family, black power. Now you become a slave to yourself based on color. And now... That color cannot answer you back because all those involved in the making of this color, in the making of black supremacy, in the making of all these things, they are not around. They are dead. They cannot, they cannot do nothing for you. So you're going around in circles. You are stunted. Mm, mm, mm. There is a master teacher. If you open up your mind. The master teacher is yourself. You name everybody. Marcus Garvey, John Henry Clark, Amos Wilson, Bobby Hemmings. You name it all the master teachers. And the master, the, the greatest teacher is yourself. If you think for yourself. If you open up your mind. Because instead of waiting on them, you can add on to what they have already brought us. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell us? Open up your mind. Free your mind. Self-thought. You must destroy race and color. That's, that is something that, in, that enslaved you. But Marcus Garvey and Elijah Muhammad and all our beautiful brothers and sisters and sisters and sisters prior to us. That's all they knew. A person cannot go beyond his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. What he knows. That's what they knew. We know more. We should. So we're stuck. So Louis Farrakhan is waiting for Elijah Muhammad to come back from the dead or he never died. We're waiting on some dead person, Jesus. We're waiting on some great person. Some we're gonna we're gonna dig up some new wisdom from Kemet. You're going backwards when you should be moving forward.
into the future, but instead you're doing everything that you can to go back into the past. And you can't go back to the past unless you have a time machine. Do y'all have a time machine? So I'm asking us, the master teacher begins and is you if you allow yourself to be. Do you really believe that all these people that you call master teachers, do you think they are greater than you? Do you think that you are, they are better than you? Bruce Lee's teachers were called grand masters, master teachers. None of them, I heard say out of their mouth, none of them made a statement that they was greater or better than Bruce Lee or anybody. A master teacher wants their students to come to their level and hopefully they can surpass them and take the martial arts or this black revolution to a higher level. And this black revolution must become a revolution. It has never become a revolution because it's not about black revolution. It's not about black. It's about the human being. It's about the human being being directed back to your nature. And a nature don't have no color. We, but it just so happened that we who are the descendants of slaves in America that just so happened to be called black. We are the first begotten of those who were once dead to be raised from death to life. You've been given that reward because we have gone through that purification process. 300 years of slavery, this terrorism, if you open up your mind and think, and I will tell you this, once we become master teachers, all of humanity will rise up and follow us as they follow us in singing and dancing and all the other little things that they do, they follow us anyway. But now we need to direct them and guide them back to God. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you understand? And your idea of God is not mine. My idea of God is simply back to your nature. To cause our behaviors to align and connect back to that which brought us into existence. So instead of destroy, instead of becoming destroyers of the earth, now we can learn once again how to love the earth, respect the earth, and take care of the earth. And once we take care of the earth, it'll give us new strength, new vigor. Our minds will open up to new ideas. And then once we look into the heavens, the thoughts, the thoughts will come into our minds that will give us the ability to go out in space where no man has gone before. And the womb of the woman, those thoughts, those ideas, they will make themselves manifest and begin its journey through the womb of the woman, which is the woman is the is a sign or the symbol of the great universe that's out there in space. And the child, the black woman, the woman, the female, will begin to bring into existence children that will contain the answers to all of our prayers, all of our desires, all of our wants, all of our needs, all, and bring our imagination and make it our reality. That which we thought was once fiction, they'll make it real. We will not, we who are living today, we will not see all this greatness, but if we do things and take the appropriate actions like we should, those future generations will look back at this time and say, look what the master teachers done for us. They broke Racism, they broke uh, white supremacy, they broke gender bias, they broke classism, they broke all these isms that we were taught about that plagued them. They were able to break all this 
and put us on a direction. Like the Quran said, these gods direct the children on the right path. And no more will they be led astray. Man, this is so wonderful. So it makes no difference if you view our great brothers and sisters as master teachers or not. Or maybe we may see them as great revolutionaries or, or, or teachers of rebellion. However you see them, we will honor them and we will respect them. Who cares about the technicalities of it? We must learn from them and then evolve beyond them. Otherwise, Everything that they learn, everything they taught us is in vain. We must not be striving to go back into the past. We must be thinking about moving towards the future. We must not be trying to go backwards. It's time for us to go forwards. But those who are still enslaved, those who are still captive, have no choice because you don't have a connection to freedom you don't have a connection to that which brought you into existence your connection is still with the slave master that's why it's black supremacy that's why it's black power because you still have a connection to your slave master but your slavery sounds better because now it's black and I don't want you and I don't want us to be no slave to white black red, yellow, or none of that foolishness. It is time for us to be free of jealousy, envy, arrogance, and all these things that plague the human family. And it can be done when we begin to free our mind and change ourselves and be reborn. The earth and this life can be wonderful once we relieve ourselves of this filth that have been in our bowels for thousands and thousands of years. It is time that we take an X lax. It is time now that we take this, what they call that, when they put this little, uh, we, must, we must get a, 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 an enema, an enema up our rectum and wash ourselves out and get a cleansing. We must be cleansed. We must be purified. These diamonds, this piece of coal, the black man and woman of America, we who, have, who were once pieces of coal, we've been through a purification process. We've been through great pressure. We are, we are now rough diamonds. You are a diamond. You have to clean yourself up. You have to be cut, shaped, and polished so you can see how beautiful you are. You still think that you are a piece of coal. So you hold on to those things. You're not a piece of coal anymore. Brothers and sisters, we are the first diamonds to be created by this pressure. And all the other human beings will follow right behind us. They are jealous now. But once we begin to express and behave and become the diamonds that we really are, all their jealousy, all their envy, all their hatred will stop because they'll see that we're not trying to be diamonds just for us. We want to shine to reflect all of humanity and the greatness that this life form can be. That's what we must understand or, or that what must be understood. It is wonderful. We're living in a wonderful time. We're living in a wonderful time because it's changing. We're living in a bad time because the change is not going to be easy. Whenever you're having a rebirth, when you are shaping and polishing diamonds, it's great violence. You take a tool, you take a tool, and you have to chop things off. And some diamonds, will not live up or be used like jewelry. Some diamonds are used for other things. But that's a 
That's something that y'all can chew on for yourself. But we want to be the diamond that is the most precious. We want to be the diamond that is the most sought. We want to be the diamond that's polished. We want to be the diamond that people will steal. We want to be the diamond. Well, they did. They did. We were stolen 400 years ago. And now it's time for the thief to give up that which he stole. He didn't even realize he was stealing diamonds. He thought he was just mining coal. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not to convert nobody to nothing, not to convince you, but to cause us to think. No more, no less. I want us to think. Open up your mind. Free your mind. Self-thought. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to the Bible. I don't want to talk to the Quran. The Bible said, the Quran said, Amos Wilson say, I want to know what you say. Stand up and be yourself. Open up your mind and become, don't brag about somebody else being a master teacher. Become a master teacher and seek the master teacher in yourself. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. I took up enough of your time. And, uh, we are a beautiful people. Surely we are. And when I say we, I'm talking about humanity. If we break these shackles that keep us enslaved. Racism, gender bias, classism, envy, jealousy, arrogancy, uh, all these isms. When you break those, you will be amazed at how beautiful and how wonderful this life can be. And then the earth will be at peace. And the animals will be at peace, whatever peace is or could be. So instead of talking about peace, instead of painting these pictures of what peace is, of what love is, you won't be talking about it. You'll be, and I will be living it. But it'll never happen as long as we hold on to these things. We'll never live it. We'll never live it as long as we will not admit our faults, our errors. We will treat the symptoms but we we avoid and ignore the causes it'll never happen and so since I'm the one that's probably the cause I don't want to talk about it so nothing will change so we live in an environment where people say that we should accept responsibility and make proper choices, but we don't. We always point the finger at somebody else. And as long as you do that, as long as you deny your cancer, the cancer keeps eating you. And sooner or later, the cancer will kill you. So, brothers and sisters, and humanity in general, a cancer is eating you. And you can, you can ignore it if you want. You can deny that it is there. It will eventually, and it is, eating you up alive. Or you can get off your high horse and allow the doctor to make a visit, make the proper diagnosis, and you accept treatment but since you think that you're not sick then you will keep the doctor out of your house and clearly and with no doubt regardless to your color the human being is surely 
a sick, sick life form. It's up to us. It's up to you. Think for yourself. Open your mind to other possibilities and other answers. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. Just wanted to talk with y'all this Sunday morning. And uh, it can get better if you want. And if you don't want, there's only one other option. And that is death. And that death is described in both books of religion, Quran and Bible. Or do you or will you listen to the Christ and and be raised from the dead? Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tali Gibran Ra. This was and is <laughs> the Reality's Temple on Earth.